Shale gas is the natural gas held in rock around a mile underground. Extracting the gas involves hydraulic fracturing, commonly known as fracking. In other countries, some environmental impacts, including water contamination, have raised concerns about fracking. The UK has a tough regulatory framework for extracting onshore oil and gas, and this has been strengthened further in law to address these concerns. This framework starts with national licensing and involves local authorities, the health and safety executive who cover the whole of Great Britain, and the three national environmental regulators who cover England, Scotland and Wales. All work closely together to protect the public and environment. Let's see how this works in practice with one of the major environmental concerns, water. So the two big risks are really the disposal of the water produced and also the as, as the water comes back up and, and the gas in later comes back up through the well that it preventing it mixing with the, the water we're using near the, near the surface. It's interesting when you actually look at the analysis and try and tie individual uh, situations where water has become contaminated with particular fracking processes that's actually, there are very few cases where we can establish that link. A great deal of the, the scares and the risks uh, that people have perceived to their water has actually come from other sources, from, from biogenic gas, that is gas generated by biological processes near the surface, from old conventional wells, from poor decommissioning of wells in the past and things of that sort. Regulations are in place to manage these risks and their impact can be seen in every aspect of a site, from design to decommissioning. Operators are always responsible for assessing, designing and managing their operations to protect water supplies. Regulation begins with licensing, granting exclusive rights to oil and gas operators in a given area, and planning permission must also be obtained. Potential operators must then submit their well designs to the health and safety executive before work begins. Assuming designs meet the required standard, the HSE then monitor well construction. Designs must be safe for the long term and wells should be constructed with triple casing of steel and cement through aquifers. Operators must report regularly to the HSE, who can conduct unannounced site inspections and can also enforce changes if required. Operators are also required to meet the same stringent standards as offshore wells, which work at even greater depths and pressures. Regulations have a vital role to play in the protection of water supplies. This is the responsibility of the Environment Agency in England, with Natural Resources Wales and the Scottish Environment Protection Agency working in their respective countries. The Environment Agency actually has a very close working relationship with the Health and Safety Executive and we have a formal working agreement with them, particularly on uh, shale gas developments, uh, where we will uh, both share information and undertake joint inspections of the site to help protect the environment, uh, to ensure that uh, the onshore oil and gas industry doesn't pollute water or air or land. If it's too close to sources of drinking water, we prohibit drilling. Uh, and when it comes to hydraulic fracturing fluid, for example, we won't allow them to use chemicals uh, which we consider to be hazardous to groundwater. So in fact, there's only non-hazardous chemicals that can be used in that process. Uh, hydraulic fracturing is a process that produces a large amount of, uh, of waste fluids, waste fracking fluids. So it's very important that those waste fluids are, uh, are properly contained on site and carefully disposed of off site at an appropriate licensed wastewater treatment facility. Each site will need to obtain planning permission from the local planning authority. This will include consideration of the environmental impacts of the development and whether restoration conditions are required. Once all these regulatory approvals are in place, the Department of Energy and Climate Change will check specific conditions before allowing fracking. Regulation does not end in production. At the end of an operation's life, the operator remains responsible for decommissioning the well safely and restoring the site to its original state.